The reason there is so much violence and chaos in the black precincts is the disintegration of the African-American family. When was the last time you saw a public service ad telling young black girls to avoid becoming pregnant? Has President Obama done such an ad? How about Jackson or Sharpton? All right, that's O'Reilly, his uh, incendiary commentary really causing ripples all across the country to debate whether civil rights leaders, including our president, are ignoring that grim reality that O'Reilly was talking about. We're joined by Larry Elder, who's the host of his own show on KBC Radio, colleague of mine in Los Angeles, and here in New York by Jammu Green, Democratic strategist and former president of the Women's Media Center. So welcome to both of you. Uh, Jammu, uh, you, you say you. that it's a hunting season on young black black males, but who are the hunters? Well, unfortunately, many of the hunters have been other young black males. If you look at the history of lynching in this country, somewhere around 5,000 blacks were lynched in a 100-year period. In my lifetime, and I'm not that young, but I'm relatively young, 262,000 African Americans have been killed by other African Americans. We don't hear the type of outrage. We don't see the type of organizing resources. We don't have the attention on this level of crime that we do when many young kids are killed in Connecticut, when someone who was attached to the inauguration is unfortunately killed. Like, and, and it's not just civil rights leaders or the civil rights industry. This is all of us. This is an American problem. I agree with Bill, disagree with Bill O'Reilly when he, he only wants to hold the black community accountable for this. He is accountable. You are accountable. The president, as the first black president, is accountable, but every white president is accountable in the same way and we we have to start giving as much attention to this as we do to some of the more uh, unfortunate racial tension I, issues I didn't that think arise. that you would be agreeing with O'Reilly but essentially you are that black on black crime <clears throat> is by far the more serious issue well I disagree with him that it is the responsibility of these civil rights leaders and where have they been and why have they been silent I, I would turn to O'Reilly and say why have you been silent why why is it that these men are the only ones who should care about it and and that type of like just not having accountability only blacks can't be only responsible for blacks this is an american problem so fair, there fair is enough. some larry, agreement you want There's to comment a uh, larry do you believe that uh, uh, reverend sharpton and jackson are race baiters well, of course I believe they're race baiters, but I want to get to the point of our, of our conversation here. Uh, and your guest is absolutely right, and I'm happy we're finding some common ground here. The issue is the breakdown of the black family. Uh, 7,000 homicides last year, Geraldo, that's half of the total. Uh, and uh, they were committed primarily by, uh, by young black people, killing other black people. And you look at the population of black people in America, you're talking about 12%. Throw out the women, because the women aren't killing people. Throw out old people and young people. You're talking about out of 3% of the population, come almost 50 percent of the homicides this is why people profile so now let's get to the other question and that is why and the answer is bad government social policy uh, and bad fiscal policy social policy is this in 1965 Lyndon Johnson launches the ill-advised but well-intentioned war on poverty 16 trillion dollars later the percentage of black kids born outside of wedlock has tripled and now about 85 percent of black kids at some point will be in a house without a dad there's a direct relationship between that and you name your social ill whether it's crime dropouts uh, unemployment or, or going to prison all of that is directly related to not having the values from a strong nuclear family but larry here's the, the, here's the here's here, i got that I, I totally get that and i agree with you obviously one more quick point though Geraldo, okay. because a lot of people dismiss everything i say because i'm a conservative you cite conservative stats from the heritage foundation aei our medic people's eyes glaze over i'm quoting that well-known neocon tupac shakur who said i know for a fact if i had had a father i would have had some discipline and i would have been more confident end of quote well, that, but you're not you're not saying that the upset over Trayvon's death is irrelevant or insignificant. I mean, he was an unarmed kid killed uh, on his way home from the 7-Eleven. 
It was a tragedy, but it's also a misdirection to suggest that somehow black people need to be feared being tracked down by a non-black person. One more time, the stats are that 95% of the homicides are committed by other black people. When there are these uh, violent interracial crimes between blacks and whites, 90% to 80% of the time, uh, it is a black perpetrator and a white victim. Very rarely is it the other way around, which is why the Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman thing was such an aberration. Okay, but Larry, this is where we're going to have to, I'm going to have to diverge a little bit because we can walk okay. in, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. We have to acknowledge the racial inequality in this country that has led to conditions that create this type of crime situation in Chicago. I'm, I'm, we also have to acknowledge the criminal justice system and the bias, the racial and ethnic bias that exists within the criminal justice system. Geraldo, 2004, the American Bar Association did an, a complete study and came up with very specific recommendations on what this country needed to do to deal with racial and ethnic bias in our criminal justice system. System. States have not even acknowledged it. The federal government, our Department of Justice, has not looked at this, has not implemented these pieces. That exists. So we have to also focus on that, the issues that led to Trayvon let Martin me, let me take and a, the black on black I got crime. you. We'll take a break. We'll be back. We're back live. Just a heads up. Uh, coming up at the bottom of the hour, the politics of perversion. And then in the next half hour, the story of whether or not the shoot down of the chopper in Afghanistan carrying those Navy SEALs was something that could have been prevented if people had just kept their mouth shut. So we'll get to that. But right now, continuing with Larry Elder, host of his own show, colleague and friend of mine on KABC Radio in L.A. And here in New York by Jimmu Green, the Democratic strategist and former president president of the Women's Media Center. So, uh, Jimu, the, the issue of energy is one, one thing that I think really resonates very strongly. Trayvon Martin College campuses across this nation, thousands flocking to the banner of uh, whether it's uh, Reverend Sharpton or some other organizing group, a tremendous energy, a passion, and it seemed to feed into the old we are victims scenario rather than we are responsible in part for our own destiny. Don't you agree that it's almost a throwback? It's almost easier in a sense to be outraged by Trayvon's tragedy than it is to be uh, responsible and say yes, when Daniel Patrick Moynihan wrote his paper on the black community, 25% of black families did not have a dad at home. Now it's 75%. I mean, that's, that's an amazing deterioration that Senator Moynihan warned us against 40 years ago, and now it's come to pass. I mean, when are we gonna just stand up and say, this is awful, and we have to get together and let's march for this, let's, uh, let's protest against entitlement programs that encourage families to be split up so they can still get uh, dependent children assistance and things of that nature. Well, I, I think we have all heard Reverend Sharpton take very specific credit for when Trayvon Martin's family was unable to get the attention they needed, that he was responsible for rallying the troops. He needs to also rally the troops on this issue, but we also but have will to... will the troops rally when there is not a bad guy? The bad guy is looking at the hundreds of thousands of deaths that are affecting the bad guy is in the community. Mirror. But the thing is, Kim Kardashian, Drew Carey, Judd Apatow, Miley Cyrus, the list is long of entertainers who came to, you know, the defense and the horror of the Trayvon Martin verdict and they are also silent. I cannot say, sit here and say, I rely only on Reverend Sharpton, who oh, has I, assorted I, I hold that Reverend Sharpton with in much issues. higher regard than many of my colleagues do. But, but I think that this is clearly, uh, you know, just go ahead, go ahead, Larry. I think this is just really a, a kind of, a, well, that problem seems too big to be grasped by a soundbite or by a protest. Well, you, you hit the nail on your head when you talked about uh, how easy it is to get out there and yell and scream about race and racism. Uh, if it were about race and racism and poverty, you would expect during Jim Crow and the Great Depression there to be more criminality than there is right now, when in fact there was less. About 10 years before Barack Obama got elected, CNN, and I was telling this to Don Lemon the other day on your show, Geraldo, CNN did a poll of black 
teenagers, and they ask him whether racism was a major problem in America, and not too surprisingly, they agree with your guest, Ms. Green, that it was. But then they ask a very important follow-up question, and that is, are race and racism a major or minor or no problem in your own daily lives? 89% said little or no problem in their own daily lives. So what's going on here is that black leaders uh, find it real easy to yell and scream about race and racism because the root problems have to do with policies that they have advanced. Democrats would have to reject everything they stand for to say, oh my God, Larry, we have incentivized Larry, people into making bad decisions. <laughs> wait a second, they can't Larry. do that. That would be a reputation of everything when they stand for. after school programs have been cut, when sports programs have been cut, when the gangs have become the babysitters in these communities, when Head Start has been decimated because of sequester, it is not only these policies that you're pointing to. It is what's happening right now when you have one set of government officials saying smaller government, cut all of these programs, take any sort of value or anything that we can give to these young kids to give them something else to do, and that's not the solution. And also, when you have President Obama in 2008 saying we need to focus on this issue specifically, on fathers being involved in their families, and you do have Reverend Jackson and others like telling him to be quiet and not go down that road, that's the responsibility they should be held okay, accountable gets final word. for that. There is a real simple formula to make it to the middle class, according to James Q. Wilson, a, a public policy professor from UCLA. Finish high school. Don't have a kid before you're 20. Get married before you have that kid. And the question is, what kinds of policies are creating disincentives to follow that formula? And those policies are rewarding people for making slovenly decisions, allowing men to abandon their financial and moral responsibility and no longer to be the protector and provider. Gotta, gotta That's leave what's it going there. on here. Young Sorry. black boys are suspended from high schools for doing the same thing gotta that white there. kids are not suspended for. Up That's next. an issue we also need Politics to and perverts next. Thank, thank you, Larry. Thank you, Jamu. Thank you both. Right? We'll be back. <laughs> okay, thank you.